They Shook Hands, Year 2, Chapter 2, Part 2. Mr. Malfoy's eyebr eyebrows lifted. Oh? Well, let's hear it then. Mrs. Malfoy says you know a reporter, Harry asked. What if I just make a public statement to the effect that nobody kidnapped me and there were no Death Eaters? The older man smiled genuinely. Now, why didn't I think of that, he asked rhetorically. As a matter of fact, I do know a reporter or two, but I think we can do better than a simple statement. How would you feel about a full-fledged interview? Harry thought about it. The idea of a full interview made him sort of nervous. I won't answer any questions I don't want to. Mr. Malfoy chuckled. I'll make sure she doesn't ask any, any, any uncomfortable questions, he promised. If you'll excuse me, I need to make a fireplace call. Whatever that was, Harry thought it a mighty peculiar turn of, turn of phrase. He walked out of the office and turned back just in time to see Mr. Malfoy throw a handful of powder into the fireplace, stick his hand into the flames before the door closed. His eyes wide, Harry shook his head and reflected there was a lot he still didn't understand about the wizarding world. Harry wandered down to the second floor to see inform Draco and Elon of the new, new developments. He found the bolts still in Draco's room and they were glad to see him again. Hello, Elon said as he let Harry into the room. I take it this means you decide we don't want to murder you in your sleep. Elon stemmed at, at a joke made Harry grin. I think you're the type who would challenge me to a duel if you wanted me to do harm, he, re he rejoindered. He explained his idea and was gratified to see the expressions of relief on both their faces. That's truly inspired, Draco told him. Father should calm down quite a bit if it goes well. Are we going to get in touch with you and Tracy and the others, Harry asked after a few moments of silence. No, I think we'd better stay right here in my room, Draco answered. Quidditch is probably out for it today, too. Draco's right, Elon said. When father got, when father has got his temper up, it's better to fly straighter, but don't let us keep you from, get, going, from getting outside. If you want to go flying, that's no problem at all. Not being able to play quidditch was a bit of a disappointment, but there was always tomorrow. With his friends incarcerated, Harry had to, make do with, had to make do with his own devices. First and foremost, he had to send off letters to his friends showing them that he, that he wasn't kidnapped. The morning paper was sure to call, cause them to worry. He sat down the, at, at the desk in his room and wrote a long personal letter to each of them. He just finished up when there was a knock on, the do on his door. Come in, he called. Harry, your idea was brilliant, Mr. Malfoy said by way of greeting. My friend the Daily Prophet is on her way over. She's most excited to be the one to talk to you, Bell chimed. I do believe that will be her now, he smiled. Mr. Malfoy led Harry down to the front entrance of the manor. He clapped his hands and the wide double doors swung open. On the front step was a blonde, curly-haired witch. She had a bit of a heavy jaw, but her jeweled spectacles drew attention away from, the, from that and emphasized her large blue eyes. Her fingers were thick and clutched a black leather handbag, but her nails were long and painted a brilliant pink. Harry Potter, meet Rita Skeeter. Okay, so that's chapter two of They Shook Hands, year two. And we're in They Shook Hands, year two. Chapter two, yeah. They Shook Hands, year two, chapter two, Malfoy Manor. And we're introduced to Rita Skeeter from, you know, Rita Skeeter from book four of the Harry Potter series. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah, Ride of the Daily Prophet. So yeah, that's They Shook Hands, year two, chapter two. Take everybody. Another video for my Storytime channel.